What's the most important ingredient in beer? It's gotta be the water. It's gotta be the water. water. It's the water. Water makes up over 90% of a beer. It'll impact all of your flavors from whether they're coming from hops or malts or your yeast, they're all interacting with that water. Malt, hops, get a lot of the, the limelight, you know, people focus on them a lot. It's kind of a romantic part, but really oh. uh, that, all that is for, for nothing if you don't have good quality water. It's the common denominator among all the breweries in, the, in yeah. this area that use it, which is kind of cool because we all have such different styles and finished products and although we might buy them all from the two row from the same company, we definitely all have the same water. We all start with the same right. stuff. The simple answer is our water comes from Sebago Lake, right? And it's you know something a lot of people are aware of, but it's also good to note that, it, that really the water really comes from the watershed and the watershed yeah. extends much further than the lake itself. Mm -hmm. You know, out of somewhere around fifty miles of, of area that really feeds into Sebago Lake and that's really what's important to protect that area because that's where it all starts. When water falls from the sky, um, it's moving really, really quickly. Um, and a watershed like this, especially a forested watershed, slows down that water as it falls from the sky. And when water is moving slowly through the earth, through this natural filter, um, it keeps extra sediment from getting into the surface water. Um, it helps keep phosphorus and nitrogen in the soil as opposed to having it washed quickly away and into our surface water. And a watershed is really, it's quite simple. There's 10 major watersheds in the state of Maine. Um, and it just is delineated by when that drop of water falls, where does it go? Um, and the Sebago Lake watershed is named the Sebago Lake watershed because whenever water falls from the sky within the watershed, wherever it is, it ultimately flows right into Sebago Lake. I mean, your water that you're using for your business is some of the highest quality, most pure water in North America. And the reason why is because of these trees and this watershed. We do take it for granted here. We have this incredible abundance of surface water. We don't have to think about it when we turn on the tap. It just comes out, there it is. We know it's safe to drink. We know it tastes good. Um, and the reality is um, that might not always be the case. Right now the watershed is about 85% forested um, and we know that around 75%, so if the forest cover in the watershed decreases by another 10%, that's where we'll start seeing effects on the water quality. So yes, we have this incredible forested watershed, but it's at risk. We're trying to protect a healthy watershed as opposed to fixing a watershed that has problems. And as you can imagine, it just costs a lot more money to fix a problem than it is to protect um, an already great resource. The understanding is that we're just trying to do as much forward thinking to mitigate the risk that we um, damage this, this incredible thing that we have here. Yeah. And what's at stake is if we're not diligent and if we're not doing this work, you know, whether it's 10 years from now or 50 years from now, you know, we, we're going to lose the quality of this resource. So there is urgency. And some of us use it unadulterated the way it is, and some of us it's a beautiful blank canvas to create. It's easy to add the things in that we want in there in the right concentrations for best results Absolutely. and all that. Well, and the less uh, the water needs to be treated and filtered, both by us at our breweries and also by the water district in their treatment plant, the better that water is for making beer, hands down. Yeah. Um, the more it's just pure from the source. You know, we test their water as well, sensory-wise and uh, chemically, but you know, they're supposed to test that water every time they mash it in a new batch. And one of the challenges we have, they're like, why? It's always <laughs> great. You know? so it's a, yeah. You constantly have to remind them it's just an added quality check. Yeah. But it's just, it's, you know, once again, so consistent and, and yeah. so good, such good quality every time that, you know, the brewers often are like, why are we even checking it? not 
luck. Nope. Um, well, it is luck. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> um, so Sebago Lake is very big and very deep. So it's about 30,000 acres. At its deepest point, it's over 300 feet deep. Um, so it has enormous capacity. And the watershed also, the area of land that drains to the lake, is um, also very big. So that's about 280,000 acres and it's mostly forest. It's not developed area. The EPA collects data from lakes nationwide and it shows that Maine is one of the top five states that has clean lakes in the country. So Maine has some of the cleanest lakes nationwide and among those lakes, Sebago Lake is one of the cleanest. Nationally, surface water sources are required to filter um, as part of their treatment process, but because Sebago Lake is so clean, we aren't required to do that. So that's a designation that about 50 water supplies have out of um, approximately 13,000 surface water supplies nationally, so it's pretty rare. So if we did have to install filtration, then that would involve adding more chemicals, um, and it would also take a lot more energy, right? So we really need to have a strategy. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yep, yep. What is the biggest threat to the water source right now? So the biggest threat is phosphorus. Phosphorus comes from soil. Soil gets disturbed during building. So, and it also gets deposited into the lake um, via runoff. So impervious surfaces create runoff, dislodge soil into the lake. So that just that slow process um, over time can make your lake um, have too much nutrients and then you get algae growth. So it is, it's a long-term development trend in the upper watershed. Yeah, we're in a really good spot right now and we should preserve that. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about protecting what we have, you know, once, yeah. you know, uh, water quality declines, then it's just, it's almost impossible to get back to where you yeah. started. Mm -hmm. um, so it just makes sense to, to do what we can now to protect what we have. You know, we don't want to be alarmist, but we also want to convey Bring attention that to we it. have to start now. Yeah. Because it's a, a process. It's a long time. Process. If there's something in the water that's got to be removed, I think that's where the prohibitive cost for processing comes. And that would ultimately have to be reflected, you know, in the price that we have to pay if it could pass out to the consumer. Obviously, it's critical. We wouldn't be able to do anything. There's no alternative. We can't go out and buy water from Hannaford's and, like, <laughs> no. pull in spring water bottles and dump them in the hot liquor tank, you know. And if the water that we got had more treatment done to it, yeah. more chemicals done to it, Right. we would have to then pay to remove them, yeah. so it would have a huge impact on us. Yeah, yeah. We're very fortunate to have a pristine water source, one of the best water sources in the country, which means we have fewer challenges than many uh, water treatment plants. Our water changes very little throughout the year. There are places across the country that um, pull water from very active, very large rivers, and that changes by the hour. Sebago Lake is just, it's, it takes out probably 30%, 40% of the work a water treatment plant would have to do to uh, treat water. Uh, really the forest around the lake, um, the pristine nature of the, the uh, the land, yeah, the protection, the protected source we have is critical for um, keeping the cost down for our ratepayers, keeping the quality up for our consumers. And our brewers. And our brewers. <laughs> and our brewers. <laughs> so once the water reaches your facility, what do you then have to do to it to make it ready for drinking? Um, the most important thing is what we don't have to do to it. We don't have to filter it. Um, we have a filtration waiver. Um, which is administered by the state. We draw the water from the lake, it's cold, and then we bring it up into the plant. We add the ozone, and then we follow that with the uh, ultraviolet light. If a filtration process was to be required, would there be chemical additions required through that process? Yes, there are filtration chemicals that needed to be added and then removed into it, and you end up with a sludge that needs to be uh, disposed of.
Brew Shed is essentially a watershed. So across the state, there's 10 major watersheds and we have breweries in all of those watersheds. A lot of them are focused here in the Sebago Lake watershed because that's where we have some of the cleanest water and the most people. Our goal here is to preserve and protect all of our brew sheds. We have some of the cleanest water in the country here in the state of Maine and that leads to some of the greatest beer. And that's why the Brew Shed Alliance is so important, right? I mean, it, without a group like ours coming together to really work to protect this um, amazing resource that we have, it would be very difficult for, um, for us to continue to be fed some of the best beer in America, which you know would have an obvious impact on our industry, uh, but also an impact on our communities. In the Sebago watershed, as it's true across all the other watersheds in Maine, in order to keep the opportunity to use that blank canvas, we have to protect the resource. The way the watershed works and the time it takes for water to move through the watershed into the outlet of Lake Sebago and into the water system is a lot of time. Yep. And if if a, a, an issue happens way upstream and you don't discover it till late stream, we got a major problem on our hands. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's not something you can quickly turn around and fix. We have to protect the tiny little streams and wetlands that are where that water is draining from the mountains every spring and um, during heavy rainstorms and the way that it's recharging the aquifers that refills the Bagel Lake every year. And fortunately, we have a really strong water supply um, but we got to make sure that it is clean in all those upland areas, all of those areas um, throughout the, the, the brew shed. It's not by accident. Right. Like, yeah. those, that watershed is what creates that. It's that natural filtration process and those protected lands that creates that, um, you know, natural, very pure water. And there's only a handful of places in the country that have a water source like that. And I think that's a great way to kind of define why it's so important to protect that those outer lying areas within the watershed and preserve that. Absolutely, the beer in Maine is so good because we have such good water. There's no question that we are blessed with some of the best water in the world and that is why we have a cluster of breweries around the Portland Water District, frankly, and around the Sebago Lake watershed. We all need that water and, and we're all part of the main community so it does go beyond beer and we all want safe, clean drinking water and sure hope moving forward it's going to stay that way.